evening all. Another live Facebook, little craft along here. Um, yeah, let me camera woman doing a thing. Oh, we didn't plan this. Oh, is it painfully close? Sorry, I didn't have words beforehand. Um, hope there's somebody out there. Um, well, let's face it, you're not going anywhere, are you? We're all just in here and um, thought we would have a bit of craft along again. Um, but here's the thing. We, when we arranged this tonight, we didn't realise at the start about the um, eight o'clock appreciation applause at the door. And we will certainly be outside our front door, you know, thanking all of those amazing people out there who are keeping us all going. And I just give a uh, big up to Maddie. You're one of them, Maria's sister. Yay, who is Maddie. a sister who's, um, who's been taken off a normal duties uh, next week and and will be you know it's not going to be wonderful but absolutely necessary so we'll be doing that at eight o'clock so we're going to make sure we're finishing time and grab something to eat and then we're absolutely free to do that so um join you know we'll be there, we'll be there. so um and apart from that yeah everything's nothing much happened here at uh you know cooper douglas towers um other than trying i've got to say if you saw me post about Pac-Man, if you know Pac-Man, if you remember Pac-Man, you will absolutely be able to picture me as that little round fat thing going up and down the aisles trying to munch instead of the little things to eat, trying to put food in my basket. But stay away from people, as we've been told to do, as does make sense. You know, I did biology in school, I get it. However, not so easy. When you've got the chasers, those, <laughs> you know, coming up behind you, Five aisles in the local spa. Me and not one other person at one point. Two was the maximum. I could not avoid them. They were determined to get me. Honestly, I came out that spa. Had a few things in my basket I couldn't take anymore. It was so stressful. Maria, it was, it was like a marathon runner. She had a foil blanket and liquid for me. Seriously. <laughs> I had to be taken straight home, feet up, cup of tea to recover. It was ridiculous. So, you know distance people distance. all right so anyway what we're going to do is we're going to play with the um the baby blessings because it was one of the, one of those um releases that was just super popular and it sold out in well 15 minutes of the show so um a lot of you a lot of you got them and thank you very much and you've been asked and as we promised we want to follow up with with some, um, you know, techniques and um, a little bit demonstrations using what you've got. This is nothing about, you can't get them. This is not to do with selling. This is about just playing together and me playing. Because here's the thing as well, you know, a lot of people's lives have changed drastically with the being at home thing. Mine isn't that much because we didn't get out much anyway, I told you. Other than the shopping stressful and everything else, which is horrible. But as for being confined at home, I'm doing what I normally do, drawing. I'm still doing me, me job. I'm lucky, I'm so lucky that I'm able to do that. So I'm still drawing in between doing these. And um, you are driving me mad though. Oh, I know. No. I'm driving myself mad, honestly. We have just, you know, it, it's so true. As well as the physical health, the mental health is so important. And that's just for Maria's sake with me. What a pain I was yesterday. <gasps> you know, you just have one of those days and it's like, seriously? I was trying to take myself like Pac-Man in reverse away from what well, was just Maria for her, for her own sanity. But hey, you have days like that, do we not? So um, it's just why crafting is fantastic. And so, you know, I tell your friends, get them involved, get them get them playing. So this is, this is what I was saying. It's nothing about selling you stuff because I'm going to show you stuff that I can't sell you. It's stuff I've been buying. And we're going to use the coloured pencils. We're going to use them again on Sunday because I've been dying to play with them. And this is the first time I've had a time to play with them. So um, I'm gonna we're gonna do a little bit of um, colouring in with that, but something that is gonna keep it simple for you, um, achievable. But also there's a few things to know about coloured pencils that make them work brilliantly, and there's a few things to know that will go ah, what's going on? That's not what I wanted. So I'll keep you you know right on those. So shall we begin? Shall we commence playing? Yeah. Let's... Do we have anybody out there? <gasps> yeah. There's that one fan. Brilliant. Hello, one person. Yeah. No. Hi you. to Kathy. Hi to Tracy from the design team. Hey Ooh, Tracy. Hi to VG. Hey VG. Dawn. Hello. Dawn from Newcastle, isn't it? 
Oh no, that's oh, Welsh, isn't she it? She always turns. Yeah, yeah. Always turns Welsh. So, yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, Lisa from the DT, Alison Garrett, Angie, Margaret, Sue, Sue Brown. Sue Brown, go, Sue Brown. Whoop whoop. In the house. Sue Brown's in the house. Excellent. Lisa Yay. from the DT. Oh, so many people. Tracy Yay. Dawkins. Hi, Bernice, Sam. Oh, loads and loads. Cheers. Thanks for being there. And you know, of course, the thing is, you can watch about Lisa. Should mention, I wasn't going to, we, we thought about craft alongs, but here's the thing with the craft along. Craft alongs are going to be so time hungry. Because you think about when you do a workshop, you got to listen to me going, giving it that, showing you what to do. And then you have to wait for you to do that thing too. And then we come back and it, so it makes it so long. So I think it's easier for everybody to get your lives back. Um, if I just show you and then just play it back when you want, we'll leave them up there anyway. Sound good? All right, let's start to play. Let's look at that bit now. Okay. Yeah, for me. Sherry from Oregon. Hi. Hi, Sherry. There's nothing there to look at, actually. No. no. I don't well, know. Well, that's if, you know, a, it's a technical gonna, error. Yeah, this is where it goes. Surprise! So, on Sunday, some of you saw me open me parcel for me pa pencils. Now, these aren't the only good pencils out there. But they are blooming good pencils. And I would say watercolour pencils. This is what I'm going to use today. Um, I love, with all the fantastic things that I bring to you on TV, I want to buy, I, I'm, I think that's cool. That's, a, that's something I can play with. That's something I can add to the mix. Um, I still come back to the core basic stuff. Your core, it's like your bread and your butter and your milk. You know? So, watercolour pencils, watercolours, fantastic acrylic paints you know and then there's also subcategories of that they vary slightly you'll get metallic watercolor pencils you'll get metallic watercolors you'll get different types loads of different types of acrylic paints but they come into like basic flavors you know basic styles so these are the latest ones i've purchased now i've had so many in the past that are fantastic i have brought you the crafts companion ones which are brilliant they're um brought you for the from a for a crafting uh viewpoint from for crafters um i have tried the derwent absolutely fabulous to do and can't go wrong doing and derwent ink tents as well which a lot of you were saying i've got them are they brilliant they kind of like a little bit different but they work exactly the same they're a little bit more inky than watercolory but work the same way behave the same way um there's so many there's the karen dash ones i've had in the past but these are the latest ones I've got, which are the um, the Faber or Faber Castell, and they are the Albrecht Dura watercolor pencils. Famous artist. And the thing is, the difference with these ones is, I know these have got a really strong light fastedness rating, which means now any dye based product you use is gonna be it's gonna it's gonna fade in light. Yeah, dye based stuff does. Pigment, which is what these are, don't. But there's different levels of light fastness some of them will last 100 years some of them 50 some of them 20 some of them 10 some of them five so they vary with what you what you invest in now the good news is you don't need a million and one you don't need boxes and boxes and boxes of colors because as these are watercolors and watercolors work by using the white of the card to make a pastel version of anything you're looking at so pastel pencils are like why because all you're paying for is a lot of stuff that fills in the pencil to dilute the pigment, to make it pastel. I'd rather have the strong pigment and dilute it myself, thank you very much, with water. It's going to last a lot longer that way. So, you don't need tons. What do you use to sharpen them? Oh, you need a good sharpener. Now, I already looked online at these ones. I've got loads of pencil sharpeners, really good ones, electronic ones. They're brilliant because they're carried away you end up with a super fine, because it's just fun sharpening them and you get nothing left. This one is a Faber-Castell sharpener because this I read that um, the pencils don't fit in regular pencil sharpeners. So I got this one at the same time. It was under five quid. So, Amazon. And it's portable, yeah, for these. And yeah, so don't, you don't, don't need to buy tons. Get good quality and get less. All right, so first thing to do, as I've always said, um, keep your pencils in your tin and do not drop them. Because if you drop them, you're going to break the leads in your pencils. And that is not good because that means every time you sharpen them, you will have bits of lead falling out your pencils. It's so important to have really lead in your pencil. Important. Absolutely important. Oh, yeah. So the thing is, 
is what you um also is important even the wood that the, the, the pencils the lids in the better quality ones sharpen better they don't chew up and, and end up with lots of little fragments first thing to do make a color chart look i did that isn't that lovely that's because when you're looking at the pretty colored pencil outers that's a, a printer's a manufacturer's um interpretation of the color that you're getting it's as close as you can get does that make sense but it's not the finished story so make a little color chart and water them down a little bit because that's what you're going to be using to make different things so let's get cracking right so what i've done is i've got some watercolor cards and i've made a tag and i've stamped this little this font from the baby blessings in I've used old paper. Now, the reason is I don't want this, the ink to show on this when I'm finished. I want it to just look like I've watercolour penciled it and that the um, absolutely... Well, I'm just reading one of the things. <laughs> Love the brown wall. Don't you suppose you know what shade it is? Is that It's like a gold glittery... Yeah, it's I a like goldy colour. I don't know if I can zoom in on this or not. It's like it's really sort of goldy. It's light on it, kind of shimmers, yeah. She likes a bit of bling. <laughs> she does. She's the glitter queen. So, um, so I stamped it in old paper, which is a really, really pale. If you haven't got any really pale colours that are neutral, you could stamp it with a pale, with a brown or whatever. Do a second generation stamp, so that it's very light. And I've used a water based ink. Um, because I wanted to kind of disappear and blend in with the rest of the colour if possible. I've still fixed it a little bit because I still want to keep the lines there to follow as I go along. And I've stamped it on my uh, the Willow watercolour card, which fortunately you can get. Now the Willow watercolour card, wait till you see what this is going to look like. First of all, I need to um, refer to my chart. So what I'm looking at here, I'm thinking that raw umber or burnt ochre is a nice colour for the base colour for the font but I also want maybe some walnut or warm grey in there as a shadow so what I'm going to do let's try burnt ochre let's see what that is going to be like there can I just say Diane's come up with a really good point Diane from the design team yeah if you save the shavings yeah then you can sprinkle them on your project for the good effects brilliant and we were just talking about this as well Diane stand by Thing is, my design team, we are a team. This is not right. While I'm doing this, just let me say this and then I'll come back to that. I am, all I'm doing here, I'm not colouring in because if I was, I'd be rubbish at this. You would be, I'd be the talk of the playground. It's like you are having a laugh. How bad does this look? Right. Oh, actually, I wanted to do one thing first. I'm not going to do any more for the minute. I'm going to leave that there. Pause this thought. Right. We'll come back to that. That's how bad this pencil is going to look on this card and that's absolutely fine and acceptable because this card is what we call a, a cold pressed watercolor card or not and it means that it's got a texture to it and it's good enough good for stamping you can still get your image but it's got that texture if it was hot pressed it would be completely smooth and it would be less lumpy bumpy but mm -hmm. it doesn't matter anyway because all i'm doing here is i'm just laying down a bit of color where i want it to be like that and this the brush is doing the work this is not like color watercolor pencils are brilliant because they're a bit less scary if you're a bit scared about watercolor than just watercolor because they're a pencil so they're they're like going nowhere then if you look at like pans and things which i'll also be using and or tubes pans of the little cakes of watercolor or tubes but that's all i'm doing there and it looks rubbish but before i do any more i need to we need to put some of this on this is the, um, this, I have to say, I've used many masking fluids in my time. And again, this is not, the pencils, you'll have to go elsewhere. I don't know where you can get that, whether than online or obviously they're Amazon. This you can get. Um, it's a Cadence product and you can get this from Create and Craft. And it's blooming brilliant. It's, I first saw it and I thought, wow, that's fantastic. But it looks like the stuff of old that look it looks like that um, you know copy text glue and i thought oh it's fabulous but it's going to be the type that i used my brush once and then i've got i can't use it again because you can't clean it no absolutely wrong it is water soluble and it's gorgeous and thick and you put one one coat on it like this and i'm just what i'm doing is i'm protecting the roses because as i said earlier watercolor 
There's no white in real traditional watercolour. You don't get, although I've got a white pencil here. A lot of watercolour artists use it and it's allowed. It's not like, you know, like, oh, I've got a watercolour jail if I use that. Doing time for me white pencil or me um, gouache. Uh, no, you can still use it, but traditionally, what watercolour artists would do, and why it looks all loose and cool sometimes, is you'd leave white on the card as the white, um, the highlight, the lightest bit in your picture. So the best way to do that, because painting around it is a little bit tricky, this is what watercolour artists use. They'll use a masking fluid, a drawing gum, and... Um, it just dries and it becomes like a like a rubber cement that you rub away later and it protects that bit of your card so that when you come to put a wash over there or paint or colour over there, that bit stays lovely and clean and white until you tell it to, you take that um, off and then you can work on it and then you can colour it with a nice clean white base to it. So what I'm doing, this is going on quite thick and I'm using quite a big brush but that's okay. And the thing is with watercolours, don't get too hung up about being super, super neat as well. I'm back to Diane on my design team, my latest, my newest inchoid hatchling. She, Diane, from up north where I am, known Diane for many a year, and didn't know until we got back in touch that... She is a super, super talented watercolour artist and teaches watercolour up north herself. Oh, and just found out also book binding after we did the full leather. It's like, hello, my team always, you know, surprising me with like, okay, who are you people? They're amazing. So, um, we share tips and tricks and things and Diane will be able to keep us right as well. Remember on the inkoids, um, on sort of the inkets and on here. So um, that's, look, that there, this is what I love about this. So Diane, this is really, really good uh, masking fluid. It's brilliant. Now, the important thing to know is, though, I still use an old brush that I've assigned as my masking fluid. I would not use my lovely Sheena brushes for this because you still have to get that, even though it's um, water soluble, you can see there's bits hanging around the ferrule bit, the, the metal bit. And you don't want them on your good, your lovely new brushes, right? So just take that out. And the important thing is to know as well, if you don't wa wash it off straight away, then it'll still just be a stick because it'll dry as a cement and it won't release, it won't wash off. So use an older brush for your watercolour, um, for your masking fluid still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my heat gun. Oh, you know, I didn't put the big light on there. Can you all see okay? Let's know if you can see the picture okay, because we've got the mount here, the light in this dining room. We might never get the bed dining room, well, we're not going to get the dining room back for quite some time, have we, Uh-uh. This has now become Studio One. So I'm just trying this, Now the beauty of this is it dries really quickly as well. Right, now back to colouring in. So you saw how rubbish that looked. Does not look good at all, does it not? But I'm going to make it look even worse. So I'm going to take actually a bit more of that colour because we've got the inside of the font and the top of the font to colour. So just light pressure there. Now what I'm going to do, and also a little bit, and you see how I've left the centre because I want a little bit of highlight there. I'm going to use this warm grey and I'm going to go around the outside here. Nice kind of sharpish line here. And under here where it's got that like ball shape to accentuate that. Maybe a little bit under here because that'll be a, casting a little bit of shot, tiny little bit there. And then like this. And honestly, this is gonna look really horrid before it starts to look any good. But that's the thing, you gotta just stay with it, have faith, be fine. So I'm thinking the shadow is gonna be, the darker area of this picture is gonna be on the left hand side. This is the quietest Maria ever is, to be honest, just, just to let you know that. I'm just worrying because Diane says she's lost sound. Can, oh, no. Can people hear? Give us a thumbs up if you can hear. Oh, you know what we didn't do? Yeah, I didn't put we your didn't mic put in. We've got the mic on, we've got a posh mic and everything. So, But normally the phone mic's okay. So hopefully, let us know if you can still hear. Yep, got some thumbs. Good. All right, good. Sorry, Diane, it's just you, pet. That's a bit of Georgie translation there for you. E pet, you've lost your sound. 
Right, so I've got my proper brush now. This is me number eight and me Sheena brushes. And what I'm doing, where this dark bit is first, I'm going to run, can you see? All you're doing is laying down the pigment from the pencil onto the project. That's all you've done. You haven't coloured in. Now I'm colouring in. And I'm going to take this lighter version here, a little bit there, and just start. I'm not worrying about the leaves because the leaves are going to be, I can make them a bit darker, um, stronger with the paint. So I haven't masked them off much on the font area yet. And what I'm doing is little circular movements, not dripping wet brush, get used to dipping your brush in the water and then taking away the excess on a piece of kitchen paper. And then can you see the amount of control you've got there and how nice that highlight is on the front of that font. The grey's toned it down. It's made it look a bit more of a natural stone colour than, you know, brand new. You want it looking a little bit aged. And all I'm doing is just using the water, the, the paint that's already on there, because that's all this is inside these pencils is paint. And I'm dragging it across the highlighted bits, the bits I want to stay light. I'm not adding new colour onto there. So now we've got something that looks like uh, it's got a form to it. It's got a shape to it. And I'm going to do the same here. So I wanted to make up. So underneath the ribbon is going to be a bit darker. It's going to cast a little shadow. So I'm dragging that across there. And also actually the plinth itself is going to be darker than the, um, than the, the, the ball of the font as well. So that could be darker here, but I'm going to show you what to do. If you start lighter, you can always darken it, but there's a secret to the success when you're darkening watercolour pencils. Never go straight on top of a where you've just padded water and blended with your pencil if you want the lines to blend. Because what will happen is the, the paper will grab the colour of the pencil and then it won't move it'll stay there it'll just say thank you very much i'm sticking here i'm setting there and i'm not going anywhere and that's not what you want so what you do is you get used to um if you you know if you're just a new crafter you haven't got a heat gun yet hair dryer is great that's what watercolor artists use but of course we've got heat guns so what you would do now is i'll dry this and that will now set that make the card go back to the way it would be when I, if I started from scratch so when I've used the pencil it's not going to get absor absorbed straight into the fibres of the card it's going to sit on the surface and then I can just um, you know, blend it out as I did from the very start so that's how you're going to work it's lighter, it's darker okay, Alison asked could you talk her through highlights you know, what goes yeah. through your head while you're thinking yes. of it so I'm really, uh, you know yeah, you just all you've got to do, Alison, is decide where there's going to be a shadow and stick to it. Don't mess around with it. I some people think you know when you you move a, um, an angle poise lamp, you can have it at the top. Imagine a lamp pointing straight down onto something. The top of whatever it's going to hit is going to be bright light, and underneath anything because light doesn't pass to go around corners, does it? Mm. So anything that's underneath the rim of that ball, say, is going to be in the dark. So, but that's a tricky light source to do because not very often do you have an angle poised light straight down unless you're interrogating your painting or something which you don't want. So normally more of a natural light is going to be maybe there's a light coming in from a window on the right hand side of this church. Maybe there's a lovely gorgeous stained glass window and the light streaming from the right. So on here, anything that's on this side or towards the, the centre is going to catch that light. So it's coming from this direction here, the light, about there. So it's going to catch here and in the centre, nice and bright. But all around here, there's a bit of dark. There's no window down there, okay? So what will happen also, this will cast a shadow over there. So lighter to darker. So what we'll be doing in a minute, in fact, we'll do it now, is we'll put a shadow underneath this. Does that make sense? So where, just decide, easy, just make it easy for yourself. Right hand's going to be light, left hand's going to be darker. Okay. All right? But the middle will be lighter again to give it some form if you're giving it like a shape. So let's put some shadow down. So I'm going to use a bit of the colour from the, uh, what I've just used, a brownie colour. I'm going to use a, um, a brown. No, shadows are really often, I remember my old teacher in high school, telling us that blue, blue is great, traditional colour, like a cool, like a blue colour for shadows. But 
depending on what the colour of the object is, you're going to get a reflection of that in the shadow as well. So I've got this blue. Now, here's the thing. That's going to look quite cool, but this blue is super, super strong. It is, um, it is the... Oh, Helio Blue Reddish. I love that name. Like, I've heard Heliotrope, but Helio Blue Reddish. How cool is that? <laughs> Helio Blue Reddish. I mean, I might not even like the colour. I'm going to just use it a lot because I like the name. Right, so what I've done is I've made a palette here. This is another way to use your watercolour paints. So what... Let me just blend this out now so you can see we've got a brownie kind of shadow going on here. And notice how I've dragged it out further to the right. So that it looks like we've got a more of a cast shadow. And then I'm going to add more water because that looks really nice if you want to not have any hard edges blended. I'm going to just drag this across to make it like as if there's a, you know, the end of the wall back there or something. Just very, see how much you need hardly any colour, just a tiny touch of colour to give that impression of the shadow. Wow. Yeah, see? Now, if we use this directly on, like, the pencil, like we said, oh, I see, it's still really strong. It would be far too much. So by just using a tiny little bit like that, we've got that really pretty cast shadow and hardly any on the brush. And that there will just stand there. I always have a bit of cord. Now, this isn't proper watercolour cord. This is the fakey kind of watercolour cord. That's not the real stuff. So I'm using that as my cheap palette. Don't use your good card as your palette. So now we've got a really pretty cast shadow there. I'm going to dry that. Just get used to using your heat gun and drying in between layers. Now that does not look like a stamp. Not a stamp at all. And that's what we love. This is where you don't have to sign up to do, you know, to art classes. You just need a, a stamp, a few pointers and play. And you're not like... You don't have to, not that I don't, like, oh, we're going to go to a, a local class when we can go out again, aren't we? Yeah. We can't wait. We do, our timing is rubbish. Literally just said, wow, well, yeah, let's get, because like I said, we don't get out much. And it would be lovely to do that just to play, just, you know, because we want to. And then this happened. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, a little tip there. I'll tell you where I want to put a little bit of that blue. is just inside the font here, because this is going to be a bit of a shadow in there. Okay. So just a little bit in there. And you've got to be careful with the blue because it can go kind of greeny if your brown is a little bit yellowy. So just be careful with that. Okay? It starts to give it dimension as oh, well, doesn't it's it? It's like you are moulding. You really are starting to kind of sculpt. And you see how hardly any colour is going on the brush. Hardly any. That's the secret to your success, guys. That's it. Use the smallest amount. Now, I'm going to colour these roses in. Um, very soon. I'm going to take that um, drawing gum off there. But what I want to do is just create a little bit of a, a shadow around them so that when the drawing gum comes off, they look like they're, they're casting a shadow because then it's not going to be flat. Is this making sense to you? And are you enjoying this? Is this the kind of thing that is going to, is beneficial? Because I don't know what you want to see. I'm just really, to be honest, just doing what I want to do. I, I, I thought, well, if I want to play with this, you might want to play with it. Unless you tell me what you want, you might get more of this stuff. But I think a lot of people want to know how to colour in. And you know what? You can't go wrong with a traditional colour or in medium, can you? See, now that to me looks far better, don't you think? I'll tell you what I need to a little bit. It's just in there a little bit. Because the other thing that's going to cast a shadow is this little ribbon here. Now, what that'll have to be put in because one bit of ribbon goes over another bit of ribbon. But I've got drawing gum on there. And we could send these out to you, but you probably wouldn't want anything through your door at the minute. That's not 100% necessary. So what we'll do is we'll just, you know, we'll hold them back for another time. Alison Garrett says, just keep doing what you're doing, Sheena. All right. Will do, Alison. And lots of okay. people say that they're loving it. Cool. And they're finding it very therapeutic. Great. That's what we want. This is, you know, this is what I like to do. Wait till you see the watercolours I've been collecting. Seriously. Oh, but you know there's worse things we could be doing, are there not? So we've got that there. Now, we could put a background in that if we want. I really like it without it. Let's put a background on the next one. Let's leave it at that. All right, I just like that pretty simplest. Oh, you know what, I'll change it mind. Let's put a background on it. 
taught myself how to do it. <laughs> Let's put a bluey kind of colour tint background to it. Um, yeah, let's use this blue here, which I'm going to use a bit of light ultramarine. I might regret it. Which one's that on your chart? It's that one there. Uh -huh. And I just want the smallest amount on here, Maria. Tiny little bit here, just to make it look like it's got something behind it. Okay? Yeah, you're going to blend that out. And absolutely. So at the minute, oh... Terrible. Don't press down. This is the other thing. If you get a good quality watercolour pencil, you should have to hardly touch it and you'll get the, the pigment coming off. And then what you do is you add the water and then all those little lumpy bumpies disappear. Can you see? And it just blends in lovely and just gives it a little bit of a suggestion of a cast shadow behind. But not much because we're going subtle here, not like myself. I never normally do subtle. I have no poker face. Anybody who knows me knows this. So, you know, me and subtle, not so much. So can you see how that's just given that a lovely little... Where did I put me? Go on there. Excuse me, sorry. Hello to Jane. She's watching. Hey, Jane. And Kerry. Hey, Kerry. And Delia. Delia. I like it. And Tom. Well, I was just thinking, when you say here's a funny thing. When you said Delia... In my mind, because you know everything to song reference. Right. And I was thinking Delilah. Uh-huh. Right? Right. But it's not Stelia. Stelia. And I get that. And then next person you said was Tom. Of course, <laughs> who's it? Was Tom. Why, why, Oh, you why? see? Why, oh. Delia. We promised we wouldn't sing this time. Because, you know, you don't have to put up with that every time, do you, really? Seriously? Although we do, we do what happens. Maria, and we just, you know, we sing around the house. Happy talking, talking, oh, happy talking. Sorry. Anyway. It's every, everybody. So, right, we've got this here. Now, this is the fun bit. I'm going to start rubbing all this drawing gum away. And the good thing is, with your distress inks, if you set them before you um, apply your um, drawing gum masking fluid, whatever that particular company calls it, this one is... Masking jelly. Oh, masking fluid underneath, because obviously it's yeah, different countries. Um, you will have, um, you'll still have the lines there if you set it a little bit beforehand. Because mm -hmm. obviously it's water-based. This is water-based. Could lift. Okay? It doesn't. Right, now, next thing. Let's do these little roses. We're going to make it easy. We're going to make it easy on ourselves. Another song there. Did you get it? Go on, then. Oh, no, I can do a whole video <laughs> of custom songs. Song blue, everybody knows one. Right, so. Uh, song, song, no, I promise blue. I won't give her any more excuse. <laughs> right, so now I'm going to pick out a pink. Now, if you look at your chart, think of what colour you want to do it. Do you want to do it? What do you want? Red roses? Do you want a purpley roses? Do you want. Because this is very dark, but imagine it lightened. It's going to be more purpley. This has got more of a coolish kind of tone to it, that even though it says scarlet. It's got like a pinky that would mix nicely with blue. More warm here, as you can see. Dark, whiny colour, I don't know. It would be very vintage if we did that one. Should we try that one? Mm -hmm. Should we make it vintage? Right, dark red, let me have a look. I like the magenta as well, don't you? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Pretty. Which one do you prefer, Maria? Pick one. That one, that one, or that one? <sighs> Uh, Anybody got a choice? That one, that one, or that one? I like the bright red, but that one. Yeah. All right, let's do that one. And this one is deep scarlet. See why you make the color chart because it you really can't tell when you look at your pencils, however good they are at you know trying to rep replicate the color. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of pencil, put a little bit more towards the the center, and a little bit towards the bottom. Believe it or not, that's as much color. As I'm going to put on there. Would that does that surprise a lot of you? Because this is where me. you're paying for the quality of the pencil you're using. Um, you really because I want this to look a bit more pastel and not really strong. I am literally using the tiniest amount. So little circular bits in the center, just as if it's the impression of a rose. And it, it's just these are quite impressionistic anyway. You know they're not. Yeah, you don't, I haven't drawn every petal meticulously, it's more of a squiggle. And then you can write, that represents a rose, thank you very much. And there, right, that, let's start with that. You'll be surprised at how little you need here. 
So, good evening to Pat Bailey. Evening, Pat. So, what I'm doing now, can you see? Look at that colour. Who would have thunk it? Maria, would you have thunk it? I wouldn't have thunk it. Nope. Look. And this is where you want to be really careful because you want to keep some of that light colour in there and some shape in it. Okay, so don't drag the colour out too much. This is where, again, good brushes come in because you've got that point on the brush that you really want to just hardly touch the card with hardly any water on the brush. What number brush is that? This is the number eight from my set of um, brushes. I'm with you, Leslie. She says that she would have coloured in the whole rose. Yeah. See? But well, that's it. But this is, the, this is why pencils are cool. And this is why I want to do these things for you. Because I don't get the chance on, on TV, even though it's all demo heavy. And I love that. And I'm, I always get loads of time. Um, you know, I haven't got any pencils to show you how to use um, on TV. But I do use them. And they're fabulous things. So this is where these Facebook Lives are all just about... Not just the stuff I've been telling you about on TV, but the stuff that I use when I'm playing, when I'm colouring, and I want to do my own thing. So we've got now, can you say we've got some variation in there? That's what you want, some light and shade and dark and, and things in there. That's all I'm doing. See some desits, do not what they say overwork it, because then you'll end up with an overall medium tone pink, Okay. Next thing is let's pop a little bit of that, the leaves in. Now, the good thing is about the watercolour pencils is you've got that lovely point that you can put that really fine vine shape back in. And also, you can draw some extra leaves in if you think, oh, where did that go? Did she have one there? Did she not? Did you? I've lost it. It doesn't matter. Draw it in where you want it to be. So say we've got that lovely, nice, vine, fine vine coming down there and all I'm doing is I'm putting a little bit of green towards the bottom of the leaves so it's kind of the easiest way of shading that I can think of for you. May says sorry to ask but what was the ink you stamped with? It was the distress ink in old paper. Now if you haven't got that particular colour you can um, use any pale dye based ink um, that you want to do. If the full rose was coloured, blend out to cover most of the whole image. I hope that helps you. Yeah, you see, I love this because Diane, being my watercolour teacher, she's chipping in. This is what teamwork's all about, isn't it? This is, thanks, Diane. I think we need to get you to, you know, share your skills, don't you? Yes. Absolutely. Right, stand by, Diane. Next one's over to you. Oh, the team was so excited when I did that. I was talking about that, um... The book binding, you know, with the full leather at the weekend. It's like, oh, yeah, I used to teach that. Hang on. So we all want a, want a tutorial from Diana with the full leather as well. So can you see how I've used this really pretty, well, I love this green. This is, I, this is my kind of green. I like green with a bit of yellow in it. Earth green yellowish. Yeah, who would have thunk that either? Yeah, earth green yellowish. All right. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take that same brush because, again, because it's got such a good point on it. All I'm going to do is just release that colour, but not overwork it again too much because I want it to keep that little bit of darker you know, edge that I've created, but pull a little bit of the colour in. So you really are kind of just filling in a little bit of the of the open gap there, but trying to still keep part of, see where that leaf still got that darker little edge to it. So again, don't overdo it. Just a little bit. Good brush, tiny little touch on the brush, and that's going to be the secret of your success. Delia says, you're so pretty. Oh, she might have been talking about the card. Oh, I was going to say, Delia. Oof. Yeah, you really haven't been out for a bit, pet, have you? <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, we've got that there. So now what we can do is add if you want you can add a little bit of a darker tone i love that green here's the thing right green really really green see how bright that green is All right there you go now if we blend this out this is what we're going to get wow greeny green from greenison if you want to tone it down a bit if you take that color that we've just been using that red just put a tiny touch of that there and i'm just going to take a touch of it and put it in there 
Can you see how now it's become more like a sage green? Can you see? Mm. Look at the difference, see? The opposite colour will tone it down. It won't make it um, dark and black. It'll just make it, it'll take away the strong chroma, the vibrancy of that colour, the clean colour. It dirties it up a bit. So what you can do then is just use a little bit of that just off the brush. Just add a little bit of shading if you want here and there. So you know if you've got kids at home as well and they want to play and they want to colour and you want to see if they're any good at art. Worst thing you can do is give them rubbish to play with. But also, you don't want to be giving them your good crafty stash or your investments and your arty stuff. What you can do is you can actually scribble them a little palette like this and get them a, a decent brush. You don't have to pay a fortune for a good brush. And then they can try colouring in with the real stuff. Yeah? Mm. Shall we paint the ribbon now? Yeah. So there's two ways we can do the ribbon. We can take the ribbon and um, we can do what we did and make a palette and make it really pastel. Or we can do again with the with the um, pencil and drag it in. Shall we do that one? Make it a bit stronger. So we'll pop a little bit here. That's all I'm putting on there. And a little bit towards the centre. Like this. There, there, there. I'm going to put a little bit of the base there. Maybe come down a little bit. Like that there, at the bottom. Beverly's excited because she's actually got this set but never used them. Oh, yay! Well, you know, this is what I thought. This is a perfect opportunity to get stuff out that you probably invest in. You know, you bet you, a lot of you have got watercolour pencils of some kind and thought, oh, you know, I'm not loving them. That I don't know what to do with them, how to make them look good. Um, So that was what I thought would be... A perfect time because then it, it's fun for me too because I get to play with all the stuff that you know it's this is just play time for me get yourself a good sharpener Beverly you're gonna need it <laughs> so what I've got now is I've got the brush now wait till you see how much color look at that Whoa. how ridiculous is that that's what I mean about the quality of these pencils okay so the tiniest amount, guys, just a finest line on there. If you want it more pastel, then you'll have to do that technique I was talking about, about putting it on the cord and dragging that in instead. And the good thing is, if this is a bit, you know, christenings, this is something that you hope these are going to be kept forever. And if you use... Something like a um yeah, this these pencils which are um light fast about there's this and another set that were like you know the highest rating on light fastness I saw I mean a lot of them but these ones are you know the safest bet on um on not fading um then they can be kept it could be put in a little frame it could be a keepsake it could be something that's a treasure for life isn't it this is why you've got to what you've got to think of. Even though we love dye-based products, we love the inks, we love all those things to play with. If it's something that you want to be kept, always go for the pigment option if you can. The watercolour concentrates, my watercolour concentrates that you've all invested in, or a lot of you have invested in. Those are, this is why I love to get them on shows as much as I can because it's good to show the dye-based option because that's like fun and you can do them quickly for cards. But if you want something that's going to go on a wall, you absolutely, absolutely, trust me, you want the pigment version. Because if this was a christening card, yeah. most likely mum and dad would want to keep it, Absolutely. They? that. Well, you would hope, wouldn't you? So what we've got there now is that looks like a watercolour. And now what you can do is you can look at it and think, can I, what's the tonal value? By that I mean, right, here's what I used to do in school. When I was um, drawing with pencil. Pencil is the easiest way to learn how to get different light and dark into something. Because you've only got one graphite pencil in order to make that as dark as you can. Which you'll never get black from a graphite. You get dark and then you use the pencil as lightly as you can going up to white to get all the different shades. So what I used to do is hold whatever I've sketched at a distance and half close my eyes. Because then you don't see any of the lines, any of the detail. You just see the form, the bulk, the basic shapes. 
So do the similar thing. I bet you've done this with cards before where you've done them and they look great close up and then you put them on the on the fireplace or on a shelf and you stand back to admire and it's like, what's on it? I can't see it. It's all just merged in because there's no contrast in there. If you imagine taking the colour out, there's no contrast. So what you can do now is look at that and think, do I want some more contrast in there? Do I want to darken some of these bits? So if you do, then let's do it the safe way. Let's take this warm grey and scribble like that. And let's take the brush and pick up a little bit of the colour. And let's maybe, you want to define that edge there a little bit more and underneath that ribbon. But you're not going to go in heavy with that pencil because once it's on there, you've got to, where are you going to put it? Whereas if you do this with the brush, you've got much more control on how much or how little you're going to put on. And that's the beauty of the pencils as well, is they're just so versatile. And as Diane said, keep the shavings because that makes a really cool background. If you do, you know the wet into wet technique we do with watercolours. If you wet the background and just drop the shavings on, all the little shavings just do their own thing and make a really cool pattern for you and burst out like little granules of colour here and there. So if someone had said that, we needed a shadow over that there because it was going to cast a shadow and it wouldn't go on because obviously the drawing gum was going to was making it like water resistant, which is its job. Now I can do it. Now, if I want to make that little font a little bit darker under there, I can. I just add in. But make sure you dry your layers between because then you've got more control. The paint will blend where you want it to be and behave nicely than if it's just wet and like a blotting paper. You might want to darken a little bit more of this round here, right at the base of that plinth. And then I think, you know, it's no meant to stop. I'm happy with that. That looks really pretty and watercolour-like to me. I'm hoping you like it. Um, if you want to bling it up, there's no harm in it. Let's put a bit of stickles on there. What time is it? We've we got time for, it's 10 to 7. We've got time for a quick other one before we have to go and get fed and get ready to, to do a thing. So what I'm doing with the stickles, I'm just swirling them. Normally with stickles, I use them hardly any and I flatten them out with my finger, but I want this to just give a little bit of texture to those roses as well. So I want it quite raised, but in a swirly fashion. And this is where the Blingmeister Maria said earlier, you know, you could glitter the ribbon up as well if you want, but I like some, not everything, because then I think the roses stand out a little bit more. But if you're a Blingmeister like Maria, feel free to glitter. Can you see the glitter on them there? That's pretty. Feel free to like that. Yeah. Yeah. And this all started because we needed the christening cards done, didn't we? Me, you and Maddie. Mm. We didn't have one, so I had to draw this freehand for Maddie's card. She coloured it in. Oh, it was just... I didn't realise I didn't have any stamps for this. Right. So, should we do another quick one? Does everybody want another quick one? About ten minutes? Give me a thumbs up or a heart if you want another quick demo. Yeah. All right, cool. Hope you like that one. That's just why you bought a pencil pencils, cool. All right, so pop that to one side. Right, next one I have here before me. This sketch here, this is this is the family, isn't it? Yes. We know who they are, it's hand and whose little hand it is. Yeah. Aww. So um, you know, this is a this is a keepsake for, for us, but um it represents, I just think, a lovely image. You know, for a lot of people. So what I'm going to do, I want this one to look like um, graphite and pencil. You know, when you see like, um, there's another watercolour pencil called graphite tint that do and do. And it's like graphite, which is what this is, but tinted and it's water soluble. But you can get a similar look if you just use a pencil. Now, this was this is an F. It's just the one I happened to find. I've got my pencil roll up somewhere. I brought it in. Oh, yeah. Is this my pencil roll up? Right. Like I say, uh, bye. Oh, I took some out because they're in the other container. Yeah, you can see really fair. That was that was full. I've got pencils from ranging from 6B to 8H or something. But a 2B is another good size. Good and a good slab to use. Oh, these are good as well. Yellow paper stumps. These are cool. If you can get these on, we'll use one of these as well. 
So um, I put these in the other container, my storage container, you know, the one I had on TV, just to show that was another. So what I'm doing, alternative, I'm using the pencil and I'm lightly going around the outside as if that line, stamp line did not exist. I know it's there because I'm following it. So you're going to follow that. That's already there. So don't worry, you're not drawing freehand here. You're just following what I've already put on there for you. And look at where the shading is. Now, the thing is with stamps, when I'm drawing a stamp, I've said it before, there's either the line's there or it's not there. You can only shade and give the impression of shading with a couple of ways. There's either um, dots, which are like what they call kind of half tone. Um, you know, newspapers, when the old newspapers used to do the, the pictures in the newspapers, was all made up of lots of dots, wasn't it? If you look closely, it's just dots. Or pop art, like Andy Warhol used to have the, the pop, a lot of that kind of look with the with the dots and things. Well, if you, and um, that's one way, but seriously, if you're drawing that by hand, phew, yeah, that would, Maria would be given, keep them right out of my way after that one. Because, uh, well, wouldn't do well for my mental health at all, that one. So what I do, and the other option is hatching or cross-hatching, which is a series of lines that you would say that's shaded there. And that's what you'll see on my stamps. You'll see in here, there's cross-hatching. It's really pale, so you might not be able to pick it up too much at the minute. But there is cross-hatching to suggest there's a shadow there. But with a pencil, all you do is you apply more or less of the graphite. So a lighter pressure and less of it will give you a lighter shade. So you can start to shade a little bit with it. So what I'm doing, I'm just going around and looking closely at the little one's fingers here. And then we've got the dad's finger there. And then the hand, you can see there's a bit of shading there. Don't go over the top with the shading. You just want a suggestion. You want it to look like, this idea of this is that you look like you've sketched it yourself. That's the idea. Pat's asked, are people allowed to share this onto their personal Facebook pages? Yes, absolutely, Pat. Thank you for asking. Yeah, absolutely. There's people who do anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> um. I'd also say to these lives, bring your friends along, whether they're crafty or not, under the circumstances at the moment, mm. because it's a good way to pass some time and learn something. Right, let me drop a name here to you. I used to love watching this when I was a nipper, right? Can I just say, if I put this out there, I'm hoping some of you do th thumbs up and admit to being as old as I am. I think I know what you're going to say. Paint along with Nancy. Did no. you ever watch? No, you're on your own with yeah, that. Yeah, you were thinking Bob Ross, weren't you? No, I was thinking Tony Hart. Oh, Tony Hart. love Tony Hart. Ding, 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 oh, no, she's off again, ding, sorry. Ding, 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 right, see the paper stump? Ding, see what the paper ding, stump does? Ding, ding, Can you remember Nancy Kaminsky? She was the very first one I ever saw. Dark hair. Really cool. She used to do loads. Used to, we used to watch it all the time when I was a kid. And I think that's what you know get, gets you interested when you're a young and, and what you kind of might become interested in later. So what I'm doing with the paper stump is using this to, to blend part of this image, to blend that pencil line to get a bit more of a softer shade. So be careful, you don't want to put too much graphite on there or it will just end up a, a dark brown kind of grey mess. But you can see it'll soften it. But yeah, Nancy Kaminsky, there's also Bob Ross, but Nancy was the original for me. Paint along with Nancy. Just use oils. Have we got some people remembering that? Diane remembers. Yay! Come on, Diane. Knew you would. Yay! Maze with me with Tony Hart. Oh, yeah. Tony Hart. Love Tony Hart. Brilliant. Oh, it was great. And the music, the gallery music. A oh, little cool. morph. Oh, it was brilliant, wasn't it? I used to run home from school so I could get in in time to see that. So look at that. Just the graphite sketch. Wouldn't think that was a stamp, would you? That's nice on its own. Yeah, exactly. So you could leave it like that. That looks, I think that looks a bit of class there, don't you? Should we ruin it with a bit of colour? <laughs> Put a heart if you want to ruin it with a bit of colour. I know we're behind a little bit, but um, yeah, okay, cool. Am I going to Two put hearts, any on advance it? on two hearts? I'm singing it in my head now. Two hearts. Yeah, oh, <laughs> sorry, I did it again to you. Right, okay, so if we're going to ruin it with a bit of colour, here's what we're going to do. 
Right. Oh, look. Oh, my God. I'd forgotten about Nancy. See? See? I, I've got all this. I don't. This is the worrying thing in my head. I forget maths. I'll forget history. I'll forget geography. I'll forget basic stuff I need to live my life. But music, lyrics, films and telly. No. Right. Okay. I'll tell you what. Before you move on, uh -huh. I'd never heard of a paper stump. Had you not? No. Yeah. Paper stump, yeah. Um, yeah, that's what they are. They're just rolled up bits of paper and you get them in different sizes. And um, and there's also, they call them torted yawns as well. Hmm? I know. I was talking to, um, who was I talking to recently about it in the green room? Yeah, I can't remember. I'll come back to us. Anyway, and um, these are great because these blend the pencil. Pencil's terrible if you're doing a lot of like the, the sketch I did of your brothers with uh -huh. all graphic. I had to put a piece of paper down so I didn't blend when I didn't want it to blend. Uh -huh. Yeah. But these are great because these blend where you want them to be because your hand can catch it and things, which is why when I'm drawing with ink on a sketchbook, I don't use graphite anymore. I use a water, sol water uh, sorry, an erasable um, pencil like these ones. This is why you don't see any pencil lines when I've erased, when I do the ink over the top. Ah. Let me show you. Look, if I sketch with this, if I was to, you know, flower or something. It's like a dog rose kind of flower. Easy to draw. I don't know how many petals they've got. Daffodils, not so much, as I mentioned. Forget what they've got. And then you've got your... Yeah, bits in the middle right if i wanted to now ink over that and use that like that that's my basic sketch from my outline of my flower yeah um let me show you the difference if i use this 2b i'm not going to do the whole thing just so we can see roughly how it works yeah me i'm drawing a whole lemon thing Good idea if you want drawn flowers with five petals and you're not sure where to go. Draw yourself a triangle and a bit like that. Just map it out with five points and make the centre of the leaf petal and that's where it will. you'll find it's easier that way than trying to do it like I've just do it, done it. Right, so... And then, oh, then... Oh, okay, so if I wanted to then ink over it, oh, this pen is oh, it's really thin. I need to put the one there with. This was a little impromptu thing, as you can see. Let me find another pen. I'll have many of them. I don't know what this one's like. Oh, the ink might not dry quickly enough. Oh, it's a thingy pen that's dried up. Oh, seriously? You should have bother now. Look, seriously, I've got so many. Try that one, that one. So then I want to go, and I might not want to follow the exact, and I want to make it thicker in bits and thinner in bits. And, um, ding, 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 ding. Sing it, Maria, sing it. <laughs> I always think of Cleo Lane and Johnny Danquath when I hear this. I can imagine they would do a fabulous rendition. I met them. I know you told me. Yeah. You said she was their canny, didn't you? Yeah, she's very really nice. Yeah, I like to hear that people are canny. It's when you're here, isn't it? Oh, no, they are horrible. And you go, oh, man. So, let me just, I'm not going to do the whole whatever. Yeah, I am. Can't help yourself, can you? Uh, well, it was just one thing leading to another to show you. I mean, these are so easy to draw. These are, if you want to start with a flower, draw a dog rose. These are, these are easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Cause, and the good thing is they look better when they're a little bit looser. See, when I deliberately did wiggly, squiggly lines, petals on the outside. Okay, and you can do some little ones with the little bits outside as well if you want. Right, so we've got that, and and this is where also you'd weight the line on the outside and bits of whatever. But if that was, I've got to dry this now. I usually use the blue pen to be honest in this set. Um, it just is a. It, if there's also a pen that when you when you scan your work into the computer, um, it's a cyan um 
pen that they've got your scanner doesn't recognize the color mm -hmm. do some research you know what if you don't know just just do some research and, and find out these and um, so if you don't manage to erase all the lines because it also it has to go on the computer right that's actually erased quite well but you can still see can you see the shadow of a line in there Just, yeah. Just, yeah. Well, if it's different papers, if it was a watercolour paper, it might raise better than others. But you can see, like, the shadow. With this one, when you erase the line, you see far less of the markings on the outside. And especially uh... if it's used the blue one, the red one. Some colours erase better than others. The blue, it's like a pale... Pale blue, it's in me. Yeah, this one, that's the one I normally use. That's the and that's the colour that your printer doesn't pick up when you scan it in. Because obviously when you're drawing for stamps, it has to scan in. So that's a big tip because then this doesn't, when you're drawing, when your hand goes over it, look, it's not smudging, see? So you don't end up with a smudgy mess all over your work. Whereas when you're drawing with pencil, Mm -hmm. And all of this will pick up on a scanner when you're putting your work in. So just a bit extra. Anyway, so we're using this again. We'll look at the chart and see what colour would be a good start for skin tone. Now they're all a bit yellow. Then I think we'll go with burnt ochre again. The good thing is with the good quality pencils as well, if you run out of colour, you can um you can replace the single pencils. You don't have to buy a full set. The one so let me show you we'll do a couple of color swatches so there's one color swatch there we'll use this one as well we'll see which one we like best see that one's much cooler got more of a greeny kind of tint to it and i'm going to also use some of this this one is um blah, 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 blah. venetian red Okay, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the adult's hand more um, browny and the baby's hand more pinky. So what I'm going to, let me try even a little bit of this dark brown because you don't, sometimes you want to cool the light one down a little bit. So let's start with this one, see what we get. So we've got, see it's very yellow, but let's put some of this in it. And then let's dilute it down. Now that over the graphite will probably work out quite well to be honest. If you put a little bit of the darker tone in it. See where I'm using this as a palette? Now, so what I'm going to do Yes, Willow, she's obviously heard something outside. Bless her cotton socks. We have the emergency half a dentist stick at hand. Anyone who's got little woofy types will understand completely. So I'm going over where the dark bit of the graphite was. And you'll see the graphite will blend as well. So what you're putting on will also mix with the graphite. It'll still lift up a little bit. So if the colour, your skin colour looks really, really bright, and you're thinking, oh, I've got a bit too much there, panic not because chances are it's going to tone right down when you put the when you hit the graphite. So I'm just looking at the darker areas with that colour and around where the little one's hands gripping because there's going to be, you know, shadow cast there. And then blend it out to just light. I don't give yourself too hard a job on, you know, trying to contour it too much just follow what i put on the stamp that's that'll be enough because you know if you start having to study the bone structure and muscles and anatomy and all that lot it's like oh i can get a bit dodgy so okay now the little one's hand i'm going to do much more pinky so i'm just going to take a little bit of that and put it more in the pinky range i'm gonna not that pink <clears throat> well, ladies and gentlemen, Mandy Taylor's in the room. Mandy Taylor in the house. 
Yeah, I loved your uh, Facebook on Sunday. We're going to do the same thing this Sunday, Mandy. Like it was cool. Really nice to be able to, you know, it's nice to have, that's the only, you know, you've got to look at the pluses, haven't you, the positive. And if there is a positive, at least we get to play together and do this stuff. Can you see how just that little touch of the pink, we're just giving it a hint of pink. And what you can also do is just give the nail a little bit of a pinky tone so that it's not just white. But don't cover the whole card with colour. You want some some colour, um, some light still there left on the thing. Right, so now I'm going to um, just do a little bit darker there, just a touch. Margaret Harvey says hi, Sheena. Hi. Hi, Margaret. And of course, you know, you know these are left on there to, for you to follow. So now we've got the graphite, but with a tint of colour, which I think looks pretty, I think looks pretty awesome, to be honest. I love that look. It looks like I say a bit of a posh card in a posh shop isn't it and you can sign that because that's your work of art there that's just what you transformed a stamp you just use the blueprint you know drawing is a necessity to um, make something that I want to play with and be creative with the drawing side the creativity comes with putting a collection together and thinking how will that drawing go with the next drawing how can I use that with that and what would that objects world look like what can i put around to use with it that's the creative side the the technical technical drawing side of it isn't the creative side unless you're doing fantasy stuff and that's a whole different ball game but when it's just realistic drawing it's more of a technical skill this is where the fun starts in the play so she'll put a bit of color behind it yeah yeah shall we put a little bit of this blue here this is a um what's this one we'll put ultramarine around the outside so just a tiny little bit, hardly any, hardly any pressure. Just a touch like that. Hello, Sheena. Hello, Maria from Benjamin Cooper. Hey, Benjamin, does this look familiar? <laughs> <laughs> Benjamin, everybody loves these, just saying. Ben's my nephew in Germany for... Everybody that wonders what's going yeah, on here. Yeah, absolutely, we should tell you. That's like, I hate those jokes and people sell them and it's like, you don't explain, it's like, rude. Yeah, they're talking amongst, yeah. Lovely lad is Benjamin. He is. He's a lovely lad, yeah. The good one. And a nurse in Germany too. Yes. So that will be, you know, thanking you tonight, even though you're, you know, of another country, it's all about rolling it together, am I not? Yeah, so Ben, just so you understand that, at 8 o'clock, people are going to be going outside their houses or to their windows and doors and giving a round of applause to all of the health workers that are dealing with this crisis at the moment. So we should be thinking of you too whilst we're giving a round of applause. Absolutely. God bless you and stay safe. Absolutely. Gina, you stopped talking. I did stop talking. I was you were you talking. Okay? Yeah, I know. Well, I thought I'd let you because it was like you know it was relevant, and and I was I was thinking, I was pondering, I was having an introspective moment, Maria. I I was considering CPR. Well, you, you never should. stop talking. I never do. No, I talk in my sleep. I talk all the time. Yeah, I do. Oh, that time I fell asleep on the train. <sighs> never again. I don't just talk. I make daft noises when I'm falling asleep. And it was a pack train coming from um, Peterborough after a show. Thought I'd get the train this time. Normally a drive. Oh, and I put my audio book on. Didn't think anything of it. And I was at a table with three other people. Dropped off, Maria. But as I dropped off, I didn't just fall asleep gently. And, you know, like someone with poise and dignity would. I went, ah! <laughs> That loud. So, and I went, oh, I'm on the blinking train. So I opened my eyes, and as I opened my eyes, I thought, oh, God, I'm going to have to try and disguise it. So I started a coughing, which, well, no, not now. But, yeah, started to cough to try and disguise this, uh, this, oh, as I was falling asleep. 
And I looked across and everybody was like, the couple across the way were like, oh. <laughs> the bloke next to me, not even trying to be subtle, He's like this. <laughs> Over the and top I, of his new So paper. all I did was start laughing, yeah. I mean, they had his laptop on, but he probably put keyboard down to, like, you know. So, yeah, I ain't cool. And I see. So, yeah, hopefully you like that. So that's the, the hand, baby's hand with the graphite, which doesn't look like a stamp. Oh, that's lovely. With your pencils. You like that, Maria? Yes. Good. I've got Willow trying to kiss me at the same this time. This might be for you, Ben. And then there was also... Say the... hi, Willow. Hi, Willow. Say hi, Willow. She's like, I need my dinner. I'm starving. And then there's that one. So um, we'll play again on Sunday. I'm thinking we'll do more with the pencils. And I think I want to use it with the, the garden stamps. And maybe try some different techniques with them. So it'll give you a bit more um, playing with that. Pen pencils, watercolours, whatever. That kind of thing. It's kind of lock. Cheers, everybody. And um, what time is that? Oh, that's not too bad. Ten past seven. That gives you time to get some to eat and then do with it. Yes. Cool. Can we give my nephew Benjamin a big big thumbs up, everybody? Just uh, just because I love him. Yeah. And he'll be going back to do a rotten, stinking job that has to be done and we all appreciate what he's doing. Yeah. Thank there you, you go, everybody. Ben. That's all for you. Look at that. Ah, uh, cheers. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, blowing fab, the lot of you. Yeah, love everybody, you. Stay love you, safe. everybody. Stay safe. Stay safe, and we'll sort you again on Sunday. And just shout if you've got any questions about anything like this. And Marie, I'll do her best to answer for you. know, I won't. <laughs> she'll ask me, and then I'll have to tell her, and she'll tell you. <laughs> All right. Stay safe. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.